Hers is the grumpy face that has launched a thousand memes. If you haven't already met her, meet Grumpy Cat. Yes, this is what we're doing. Because nothing quite says Christmas like a made-for-TV movie that's a thinly-veiled cash grab starring a flash-in-the-pan internet sensation. If you've been living under a rock, or perhaps just haven't paid attention to the internet for the past few years, this here is Grumpy Cat, an oddity formed from both dwarfism and inbreeding turned into a cash cow thanks to a permanent scowl and Reddit. Did you know that the cat's name was Tard? When confronted about this, the owners claimed that it was short for Tardosaurus. That is clearly BS. Blatantly sincere. What else could that mean? <laughs> Sadly, Miss Sauce died earlier this year. And as a fellow cat parent that suffered a loss in 2019, I figured, since it is the holidays, now would be the time to look back at the peak of Grumpy's career. A Lifetime movie, sitting atop a gigantic pile of merchandise. Enter Grumpy Cat's Worst Christmas Ever. And enter the eggnog. Sans the egg, and without the cow juice please. If you're ever 21 years old in the country, you can get that joke. Flying cats, Canadian malls, and the impact font. Ah, yes, this must be the so-called Christmas thing that people go on about. It opens on a montage of Grumpy Cat against a green screen, spoofing various film tropes. Do we really need an introduction for this cat? You can take one look at Tard and understand why it's called Grumpy. Grumpy here lives in a pet store, in which she is cursed to be passed over day in and day out for cuter, happier animals. And for some reason, the movie feels the need to give each and every critter an introduction. Seriously, this goes on for far, far too long. The only thing that can be gleamed out of this is that Grumpy Cat was returned twice. All this for a cheap cutaway gag and three seconds of development. Grief. Okay, focusing on the film. Out walks this dog, and in walks some yuppie in a suit representing the mall. Turns out that the pet store hasn't been keeping up with rent, and if they don't pay up, the animals are going to be kicked out and made homeless. Enter a harebrained scheme to All we need is a picture of Grumpy saying something like, uh, I had fun once, it was awful. <laughs> I mean, you put that on the internet thing, my Bob, and that is sure to go viral. Her face will launch a thousand products, everything from t-shirts to coffee mugs. After that, TV appearances. And, oh, I don't know, maybe a Lifetime movie. Wait, no, that one actually has economical history. The other one, this one, the dog. It's supposed to be worth a million dollars in a domestic pet shop. Seems legit. I think we can all see where this is going, but heck, it's a family flick. So let's just watch it unfold. Mr. Pet Shop here has a buyer, and there's going to be a media circus about the dog that very afternoon. All for the perfect setup for the perfect... Um... Okay, look, to be honest, I think calling anything about this film perfect would be an insult to the art. We're a little under 10 minutes in, and so far, we have shown off the meme cat, we have raised the stakes, we have gotten the plot underway, and now we're about to meet the human lead. For once in one of these films I'm reviewing, the pacing doesn't suck. This is Crystal, the aforementioned frontrunner. Apparently, she knows everyone in the mall. Even the abusive Santa. You're fat. You're not exactly anorexic. <laughs> Jesus wept. Anywho, after a little fourth wall breaking, and of course after every human character gets the same treatment as the animals before, we yada yada. Blah blah blah, B story, not my line, not my line, not my line. Meow. Yeah, what the cat said. Well, this is awkward. I've uh, never had media review itself before. So the woman is Crystal's mother, 
And the elf is... It doesn't matter. They have a B-plot romance, but it just doesn't go anywhere. What does matter is the plot point here, that the mother is pressuring Crystal about making new friends as they moved into this town only a few months before. Well, okay, friends who aren't adults at a shopping center, and especially friends who aren't this guy. George, the security guard, is at best a buffoon. At worst, the kind of guy who hits a woman half his age and just racks up the major creep points. With that said, after we get to see the girls in Crystal's class, maybe she kind of has a point about not hanging out with kids her own age. Well, I was thinking we could maybe put together like a study group or something. It could be a lot of fun. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I'll definitely RSVP no to that. <laughs> Do we look like a bunch of nerds? <laughs> what a dork. As if we actually need to get smarter. From one douchebag to another, there's now these two clowns. Wannabe rock stars turn something something. Can we just skip ahead past his introductions? Remember that compliment I made about one minute ago about pacing? Consider that retracted. Are oh, you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. That's one trippy looking dog. <laughs> hey, you want to see him run? Oh, we'd love to see him run. There you go, folks. There's a million dollars running down the hallway. So we get that these two hair metal bulk and skull stand-ins are baddies who are going to try and steal the dog, right? Good? Good. Okay, before we can get into the meat of it, Crystal is all depressed after her, well, depressing encounter with the girls earlier. So to fix it, here's bootleg mall father Christmas and his magic coin. Discount mall Santa, in an effort to cheer up the little oik, tries to get Crystal to make a wish and throw the coin into a fountain. Any fountain will do. You could use a toilet bowl and a pinch. Loki, this guy is great. He's the right level of self-aware for a TV movie like this, and his delivery is great. Russell Peters, a tip of the hat to you, sir. Since, of course, we have a family plot to get on with, Crystal makes a wish for a friend and chucks the coin into a nearby wishing well. One corny joke later, and yep, canned American Christmas magic. God bless the USA! Refilled with hope and humanity, the Red Queen from those terrible Resident Evil films makes a sudden discovery. Hey, hey, I like those boots, girl. Yeah, you looking good. She can hear Aubrey Plaza's voice coming out of the cats. Well, okay, she doesn't understand she can immediately because, you know, if she got it instantly, we wouldn't get a few gags at the expense of every other character in the scene. It gets a bit cruel here. Mr. Pet Shop Boy opens up about how his wife's death caused his financial woes, and Grumpy just straight up uses his grief as a litter box. Don't get me wrong, it's funny, but yikes, this is a bit more uh, League of Gentlemen than it is Justice League. Do the humane thing, give me the gas. Who is saying that? <clears throat> saying what? I thought I heard somebody say that they were in so much pain from listening to your sob story that they wanted to be put to sleep. Huh. Well, forgive me for sharing. One more sassy snapback later, and blam, the penny drops. It's you. Who, me? Say that again. Okay, I don't know what's happening here, but I don't like it. You were talking to me. What are you, some kind of blonde witch? You can't understand me. I heard all of that. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Well, stop it. You stop it. You stop it, witch. Kaboom. Premise, meet, payoff. The girl wished for a friend, and she got an internet superstar that happens to be the face of a multi-million dollar marketing sensation. Merchandising, where the real money from the movie is made. Crystal goes to confront the mall Santa, and dun dun dun, it's not the same guy. Come on, kid, it's a lifetime made for TV film. Get with the program. Wait, wait, I said get with the program, not the B plot at the staff Xmas party. Filled with bloody product placement. Nobody cares about this rubbish from Wish.com. Oh, there goes any chance of that sponsorship. Come to me, Crystal. You are powerless to resist me. Mow. I did not edit that. Oh dear. 
that slow motion is almost as bad as that fruitcake. But it does get Crystal to go back to the mall after hours to spend time with Grumpy Cat. While these two Muppets earn that Cinnabon sponsorship. Why are the Cinnabon employees always the last to leave? Because they're up all night making those delicious sticky buns. Oh. Okay, A plot, time to shine. The two imbeciles from earlier, who are actually named Zack and Donnie, sneak in, while Crystal uses stolen keys to, uh, to talk to a cat. This sounds more and more like the ramblings of a madman, doesn't it? Mall cop down, mall cop down! And with security taken care of, off come the masks. Beelining straight for the pet shop, the crooks get the main chunk of the plot underway. And we're only 31 minutes and 7 pages of my script in Google Docs in. Right, so obviously Crystal saw everything, so we can uh, rush the police and get this whole kerfuffle sorted out, right? But that would mean a pretty short movie and a lot less advertising revenue, so luckily, and through no persuasion on my part, it went like this. Oh dear lord, it's just self-aware enough for me to be able to enjoy it. TWIST! The burglars left their keys. Crystal can save the day. Well, only after she convinces Grumpy to help by telling her what will happen if the pet shop goes bankrupt. This whole scene goes from a light-hearted gag to uh, animal shelter jokes to... Holy balls, what? 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 Bloody hell, and I thought that I took it too far in that Kitten Squad video. Adopt. Don't shock people. You are a very myth kitty right now, aren't you? This is Jones, by the way. Say hi to Jones. Hi, Jones. You just want me to put you down, don't you? I'm gonna put you down. <laughs> With that miffed kitty scared straight, the two numbskulls make their exit, but only after insulting music. I'm the guy, and you're the guy behind the guy. Like, if this was Nirvana, I would be Kurt Cobain, and you would be the bass player with the really long name. Wait, 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 wait. Do you mean Chris Novoselic? You know, the guy who, after his incredibly successful stint in the music business, went on to become a founding member of Jam Pack, went on to become a champion for musicians' First Amendment rights, and is now pushing for voting reform in the United States. I know this is a fictional character in a make-believe setting, but man... And that is how you do British swears on YouTube without getting Susaned. The rude, inconsiderate Burks realise they don't have keys, and act with the appropriate level of intelligence for cheap villains. Until Blondie here realises where he left them. Cue the Scooby-Doo style chase through a consumer winter wonderland, reaching its peak in a sporting goods store. Come here kitty kitty. Nab him, yo. Oh! Oh, how in the... This is how you know that this film was made in Canada. Should this have been produced in the United States, this scene would have played out very, very differently. Okay, this starts out believable, but then... There's no way of putting it. That's a cat on a turret. Even the film makes fun of how stupid this is. But it does give cover for the million dollar mutt to get away and for uh, this painful accident to happen. That is up there with the nail from Home Alone. Ugh. After yeeting the keys into the wishing well from earlier, the yuppie suddenly shows up and finds the dog. Realizing what he's got, the ever so charming Mr. Bateman gets what he deserves when he's jumped by the most incompetent pet nappers since Cruella de Vil. Since Crystal slipped away into the darkness, they think that this Muppet is the one who pelted them with paintballs. So cue the awkward interrogation scene. Turns out that, like every other slime in a Men's Warehouse two-piece, the walking haircut will happily squeal and confess that he will help the robbers because he wants the store gone so that the mall can put in another fast food establishment. 
Wah, wah. Don't worry, he gets what's coming to him. Off screen, of course, because if we show these characters being competent for all of two seconds, it'll ruin their one defining trait, their idiocy. Meanwhile, Crystal finds George Blart and promptly sets him free. Crystal, smartly, asks to use George's mobile phone to call the Rosers, but he claims the dynamic dimwit stole it earlier. Now, two things are about to happen. The first is rather expected since this is a lifetime production. The second though, that actually caught me by surprise. The obvious is that George takes charge of the situation and sends Crystal home. During their walk, they have a small heart to heart and Crystal opens up about her parents' divorce, her loneliness, and the usual topics that you'd expect from Lifetime. Some fatherly advice later, suddenly... Oh, hey, real quick, um, when the cops come, where should I tell me to put those keys? <laughs> what oh George lied. We're not calling the police, Crystal. Plot twist. George is the criminal mastermind who set up the entire sting. I've got to admit, that's a good one. And even with that little stare down moment earlier, I didn't see it coming. One daring escape and one phone call gag later, the treacherous trio regroup to make new plans. Apparently, the dog was an afterthought, and the original plan was to rob the safe in the jewelry store. Now, I confess, I am no expert. However, I do have a fair few years of retail experience, and I also have a fair few years of closing experience. Now, what traditionally happens is that at the end of the night, store employees gather up a deposit from the safe, which is usually nearly all of, if not all of the money, from the store that they've made that day, and they put it into a bank. So to really get a decent score out of a situation like that, you'd have to go around multiple shops inside of this mall, crack multiple safes, which is gonna take a ton of time and... I'm overthinking a film about a mean cat, aren't I? Well, with the cat out of the bag, the whole film can come to a head. George rings out the Doofy brothers and plots a trap. Meanwhile, the parent of the year B plot realizes her daughter is currently missing. What a brilliant human being this lady is. Back at the mall, Crystal walks right into the trap. Oh no! And the budget has run dry, so we're back at the pet store for her interrogation. Oh no! Blah, blah, blah. Tell us where the keys are and, uh... I'm not gonna hurt you, Crystal. <sighs> I will, however, hurt the cat. Whoa, what? Me, cat? Don't! Y you what? You put that cat down. It's worth more than your studio apart... Uh oh, Crystal fessed up where she threw the keys. Well, I guess that's it. The bad guys win. The film is wrapping up with a black and white montage. I lied, okay? It didn't go down like that. Ah, well, thank you, self-aware narrator cat. Naturally upset, Crystal breaks down weeping. And of course, since this is a holiday film, Grump gives the Sprogling a pep talk. It's expected and a little corny, but we're watching a bloomin' Christmas film about a chatty kitty. It's jailbreak time, since surprise, surprise, the three numbnuts didn't lock the cat's cage, setting up some animal-based slapstick, and then a chase, and then a car chase through them all at breakneck speed. Okay, a car chase at breakneck speed with a moderate budget. Out in the car park, it's time for the final showdown, just as the mother of the year finally shows up. And, yep, chicking, screeching to a halt. The reality is that cats don't wear seatbelts. I don't think they can wear seatbelts. Can they wear seatbelts? Okay, okay, enough with the cheap jokes. 
Crystal is reunited with her mother, and all is well. Those guys didn't do anything to you, did they? That's a different kind of Lifetime movie. Let's just wrap this up before Susan yeets me even further into algorithm obscurity. Smash cut to Christmas Day, and finally, inevitably, Crystal gets to adopt Grumpy Cat, who her family is apparently okay with her talking to instead of other human beings. Does anybody know a good therapist? Can I be honest just for one second? I sort of enjoyed this. It was just mindlessly stupid and self-aware enough for me to be entertaining. I get that it wasn't highbrow, but I had fun, honestly. Alas. From me to you, from everyone here at the house, including this stuffed animal, Merry Krampus. And if you don't like that, then get in the bag! See you next year.